So welcome back to the next instalment. Yes, I've been cutting things apart again. Why? Because I like to. I like to see what goes on inside. And this is what we're focusing on this video. Now, this is called a deceleration fuel shutoff valve or fuel cutoff valve. So when decelerating, you've let the throttle off, fuel flow is shut off to improve fuel economy during normal operating temperatures. So this is linked to our throttle body micro switch from the last video. Now, I haven't got an inner manifold set up for the switch because I've sold it. I have got another one, but that's uh, being modified for future fun cars. Anyway, I digress as I normally do. So this is linked to our thr throttle body micro switch. Imagine it over here, tick, tick, tick. So when the throttle body is closed and the RPM is above 1600 RPM, this is active. And when the throttle body is closed and the RPM is below 1300 RPM, this is not active and fuel flow resumes. So <clears throat> what happens? So when this is active, this pushes the plate back down. Why does it want to do that? Well, we need to cut our fuel. So imagine our plate is up, our fuel pin's already in a nice position. This activates, diverts air from under here, through here, through the trunking, in there, pushes down on this plate, forces it down. What does that do? Well, as the plate goes back down, our fuel pin comes back down and shuts fuel off. So when we're focusing on the back of the airbox, there's a plug here and there is a plug on this side for the uh, cold enrichment valve. Now it's important not to get these mixed up because different power from the micro switch and the throttle body is sent to both those parts at different times. If you get mixed up, things won't work. So this plug should have a plug in it with a black and yellow wire and a black and brown wire. That is a white plug for it. So I'll try not to delve in too much on electric, but I'll give you a good idea of what's going on. So <clears throat> the black and yellow wire that comes in here, that is fed from the throttle body switch via 12 volts. So 12 volts comes down here when the throttle body is closed and the RPM is above 1600 RPM. Now the black and brown wire is another wire. This is an earth path which goes to the idle stabilisation valve controller, which will come on too shortly. So when the throttle body is closed, power comes into here, back out of here, earth through the controller, the valve is released. So what happens when that valve is released? Right, so this pipe here is connected to engine vacuum. So engine has got vacuum, especially when you close the throttle, it has more vacuum because it hasn't got incoming air, yet the pistons are still going down the cylinder during a vacuum. So the throttle is closed, this has a vacuum, which is trying to pull this across. This is a little rubber diaphragm. And we'll move it slightly. Rubber diaphragm on a little valve. So when the switch is activated, vacuum on here, the switch de-energizes which means the vacuum becomes the controlling force and causes this diaphragm to move back, which allows air to then pass through here in that trunking, up here, out of here, and push the plate down. So we know this controls, or earth, through our idle stabilization valve controller above 1600 rpm so how does it cut off below 1300 rpm well that is all to do with the idle stabilization valve controller which on a 16 valve is behind the dash center console so what that does that below 1300 rpm breaks the earth path on this wire which means that energizes again and forces itself on there irrelevant what the vacuum's doing that valve in there becomes the governing force closes that no air can bypass so there's two modes of operations as i've probably said a few times now so 
this valve, 1600 RPM up to red line, say 7000 RPM, is active with the throttle closed and the throttle body switch working using the ISV Earth. Now I'm going to say 750 RPM to 1300 RPM. 750, why? Below 750 the engine can cut off anyway. So we're going to work off that window. In that window, the switch is not active. Fuel resumes and the ice valve does its job. Now I've mentioned the ISV idle stabilization valve a few times. Now the next video is going to cover one of those because I'm going to cut it apart. Why? Because I like to. So there's two stages. Driving along the road, steady state, 3000 RPM. And then you uh, take your foot off the accelerator and the engine draws down. So foot off, foot off the accelerator, obviously this valve system works, pushes it down, cuts fuel off. And then the engine, because it's got no fuel and no air going in, it slows itself down. And the revs start dropping down nicely in a controlled manner. <clears throat> and then once they get to a level below 3900 RPM, that is when the idle valve takes over. So this goes back and resumes its dormant state. And then the idle valve takes over and controls the actual engine idle. So here we have a nice little simple diagram I made for you guys just to try and get a visual idea of what's going on. So we've got our deceleration shutoff valve and we've got our throttle body micro switch. Now we've got three wires in that. One of them is a 12 volt input from ignition. Another one is a 12 volt output going to the deceleration shutoff valve. And another one is a 12 volt output to the cold enrichment valve from the previous video. So we've got those and we have our center one which is the output to DCV. That goes onto our valve. And then we have another wire, which is our earth path, which goes to the ISV controller I was mentioning. Now the ISV controller gives us our earth path, which then dictates whether the valve works or not. And moving on to the idle control module, which sits behind the center console. So idle control module, we've got a positive 12 and your earth path, keeping it simple. Then we're going to have inputs to that, so we need an ECU RPM input, which is going to come from your ignition control module. And we also have a coolant temperature input, so we know we're at working temperature, and those are the RPMs. And then we go off to one side, we've got 750 RPM to 1300, the idle stabilisation valve is active, and fuel flow resumes. And on the other side, we've got 1600 RPM to 7000 RPM, the deceleration cutoff valve is active, which means fuel is cut off when the throttle body is closed. So again, it's just a simple, simple circuit so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So that's the end of the video. I hope it's given you more of an insight into this valve. And now problems, what problems can it have? Well, if this valve is not working, it'll either be mounted, and you'll see these terminals start being mounted, or normally it will cause you a lot of problems when you're coming up to junctions and dipping the clutch and sort of going to an idle region. Um, or you just put your foot on the accelerator to just enough to open the micro switch, the car will tend to cut out. They're quite common problems. Now, these are very common to popping off. The earlier ones, like this setup, not so common because they're a lot better designed than newer type on your sort of 90 spec where you've got a different elbow top um, and this is situated differently. They have more of a habit coming off because they're not exactly the strongest. You can put clips around these. But to be honest, give it a clean up, get the oil residue off, and it sits on nice and tight. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. I do my best to explain things in simple terms, so we all understand. Next video will be the idle stabilization valve, because I've got one spare. And like I said, I'm going to cut it apart and see what's inside and show you how it works. If you do like the videos, if you can, click subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out. And give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for watching. Bye.